Good morning. I have a hundred percent comfort level with your message and just what goes on here. It's just, it, it, I've never felt like that. I have an 85%, maybe 90% acceptance or understanding of the material. I have a few things that just, I can't seem to wrap my head around. Some of the larger issues in life, and I've, I'm a long time listener. This is my first seminar. Very long time listener. Some of the larger issues that you help people with, be it genocide, race issues, whatever they are, it appears to me that if you believe in an, an all-knowing source, a God, a universe, a source, Gus, then if you don't see it everywhere, you don't see it anywhere. So these things that we are experiencing... But before you go further, we'll be brief about this. If I don't see it everywhere, then I don't see it anywhere. So you're not allowing yourself a disconnected moment. That's perfect. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, from your own experience, sometimes you're so tuned in, tapped in, turned on that everywhere you look, you see value and upliftment. And sometimes you're so out of sorts that you just can't find it anywhere. But it's not because of this all-knowing source letting you down. It's because of your tuning that's letting you down. Okay. Maybe I'm not so much let down. I just, it seems like these things that we experience as humans we have to experience in order for our soul to progress. Well, we don't agree. Okay. That's why I'm here. Because... <laughs> That's the 15% I can't get around. We started to jump in just a moment ago when you were talking about that 85%. And we started to say that... You see, the difference between you and what you want to call your soul is that your soul, your inner being, your source energy is not out here on the leading edge dealing with the nitty-gritty of things. But you are. And as you deal with the knowing what you do want and knowing what you don't want, you are moving thought beyond what it has been before. You're taking desire into new places. So when your life experience takes desire into a new place, your inner being, all that is, benefits by this new discernment, by this new discovery, by this new preference. And your inner being becomes aware of it and focuses upon it and acknowledges how it fits with everything else that your inner being knows. That's why this goodness of source that you can feel so profoundly is as it is. So when something new happens in your experience and you ask for something in a new way, your inner being receives it and holds it. And from your standpoint as a physical human, gives you a sort of guiding light, a sort of measuring point, a sort of emotional guidepost in order to feel if you are staying apart from what the new discovery of more goodness or whether you are moving in the direction of that new discovery or that new goodness, you see. Go back to your premise because we want to hear your premise. Premise is in order to progress as a soul through these physical incarnations. All right. Now, before you go further, we just want to say everything is about motion forward because we are all eternal beings. And the very reason for your human leading edge in this time-space reality existence is that you, pioneer, out here having new experiences, this combination has never been before into all of the universe, having new experiences, you're launching the new rocket of desire. To what end? Are we leading ourselves towards God consciousness, do we... Well, that's already a done deal, but toward the endless end, because there can't be an end in eternity. And we know the reason that you say toward what end, toward the end of never-ending joyous expansion. It feels to me like we're in school, and we're here to learn. Every person in this room is learning something new and interesting. But it's a flawed premise that you are here in school. Okay. That's human perspective. Uh, That's yeah. human perspective, and the flawed premise is the teacher or source, inner being, has already got it all figured out. Flawed premise, because while there is so much that is known and that steady light is burning, expansion means everything is not known. Mm -hmm. You are out here finding new knowledge, and when you find it incrementally and present it to the vibrational reality, then source holds it and melds it until you, the creator of it, catch up with it. That's how the evolution takes place. Okay. It just seems like we're all on a path 
of learning and understanding and growth. If you've been listening to us for a while, a you've heard while. this, you've heard this, but you're going to hear it differently right now because we're going to make sure you do. <laughs> the basis of your life experience, your life, your human in this physical time and space life, freedom, growth, joy, freedom, growth, joy. Freedom, growth, joy, a triad of intentions. That's what was in your vortex when you came into this physical body. So you say, yes, growth, 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 because you, like you said, we're in school. So growth, growth, growth. Yeah, growth for sure. But freedom and growth and joy all equal a triad of intentions. Yeah, you say growth, growth, growth. We say, don't get it out of whack. Freedom, you're so free you can choose bondage. That's how free you are. You're so free that no one else can offer a vibrational output. So no one else can be the reason that you attract what you do. That is freedom. Only me is offering a vibration that equals what comes back to me. That is the ultimate freedom. Expansion is the inevitable outcome because I can't live in this physical body exposed to all of this from this platform of understanding and then exposed to more without asking for something beyond where I am. It's just the nature of focus and consciousness to be reaching for something that is improved, an improved preference, an improved desire. It just happens whether I even speak it out loud or not at all aspects of my being, even cellular asking is taking place. So freedom. I'm so free that only I am offering a vibration that's equaling what I get back and expansion or growth in that I cannot even exist without the contrast that surrounds me causing me to focus into more freedom and growth. But here's the answer to your question about what you came. This is the end toward this end joy. But we've got to explain it to you in this way or you'll miss it again as so many humans continue to miss it. So life causes you to ask for something that you don't have. Let's just start there. Just accept that with us for a moment. So you've launched this vibrational rocket of desire and it is received by your inner being and law of attraction is gathering other cooperative components. And so here is this desire, not yet manifested, so you can't yet see it, but it exists just the same. So expansion has taken place. Source has expanded. Source has benefited by your perspective. All that is has taken the expansion that you have provided by your careful consideration of your life experience. And you and others are doing this. Can you imagine what this collective consciousness vortex must be like and the expansion of source? So now here it is, it's gestating and law of attraction is gathering cooperative components and you are in your humandom in your human form, you are having some sort of relationship with your expansion. And if you feel exhilaration, then the relationship that you're having with your expansion is one of blending and alignment. In other words, you're going along with it. You're feeling as your inner being feels about this new discovery. But if you are doubting it or fearful of it or jealous that you haven't accomplished it yet or any of those negative emotions, then you're not up to speed with it. But because you care about how you feel, because you are, are naturally equipped to care about how you feel, you're selfish in nature in that you want to feel good, everyone does. So let's say that you just hear Abraham or others and you decide to think more about what you want and why you want it than how it's going to come and when it's going to come and who's going to bring it and where it's going to come from. So it's comforting to you. It's pleasing to you. It's giving you a feeling of life, even though you can't see it yet. And in doing so, you become a vibrational match to this creation that has been gestating and is ready for you to be ready for it. All of your creations are much longer ready for you to be ready for them than you are ready for them. So much ready to explode into your experience in the moment that you tune your tuner to the same frequency and begin to receive it. So when an idea occurs to you and you have that feeling of exhilaration, oh, I know what I want. That's a manifestation right into your mind, manifestation right into those words. And the manifestation process has begun. And this is the toward what end answer that we're really wanting you to hear. Because once you are rather consistently a vibrational match to what's in your vortex, so that the ideas begin coming to you easily, say that better, because you are in a vibrational place to begin receiving the ideas more easily because you're not a mismatch, you're a match. So the ideas are flowing to you. Those ideas are life-giving. They feel good. You feel exhilarated by them. And then even more, the thoughts are turning to things. Even more, you begin rendezvousing with others. You begin having experiences that are giving you answers to more questions. And you feel this 
highness, this worthiness, this sensation of things are working out for me and the entire universe is assisting me. And then as things begin to pop into place, and they do, it's like bam, bam, bam. That's that sweet spot. That's that toward what end that you've come for. And I completely accept all of that. I do. It just seems that our experiences as humans are so significantly different. Well, that's only because, so step one is contrast causes you to ask. We've been talking about that all day already. And step two is source answers. So we wrote a whole book about that. Ask and it is given. When life causes you to ask, it is given. That's what the vortex, the vibrational reality it's given. And you say, well, big deal. It's given, but I can't see it. So what good is it? And we say, well, you could feel it. That would be an advantage to you. When you can get into the receiving mode of feeling the exhilaration of your creation before it's fully manifested. It's like the kernel of corn in the ground. It's the beginning and you can't see it, but there is some satisfaction in knowing that it's there. And there's some satisfaction in understanding what the outcome will be. And that's what we're wanting you to understand about this vibrational reality. There is an outcome that is in the process of being that you can't see with your physical senses or hear and so forth, but you can feel with your emotional senses. So if you can believe it before you see it, then you feel better. You're uplifted. It's what you call hope or faith. It's belief in things not yet seen. So step one is, contrast causes you to ask. Step two, it is answered vibrationally, but then you have to carry it, and it's the reason you're here in this physical body. You have to carry it into the full manifestation, which means you have to get into the receiving mode of what you've asked for. And that's really what the art of allowing really is about. You have to find a way of feeling it even though you can't see it, of knowing it even though it hasn't manifested yet, of trusting it because your emotions are letting you know that you're on the right track. So that's step three. Step four is getting really good at that. Step four is just mastery of that. Step four is feeling good for no good reason. Feeling good not because I have an ulterior motive. Feeling good because it's natural for me to feel good. Feeling good because my inner being feels good. And when I open that channel between me and my inner being, I feel as my inner being feels. Feeling good, the most natural way for me to feel. It is such an anomaly when you don't feel good. It is so weird when you pinch yourself off from how your inner being is feeling and what your inner being is knowing. So step one, step two, step three, step four. Step five is being back in step one and not being mad at yourself because you're wise enough to understand that contrast is necessary in order to create the vortex to begin with. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we like this question so much because... Abraham, what's the point of life? The point of life is joyous creation, not creation by default, not stumbling around, not offering a thought because I'm observing something, not offering a thought because that wheel is squeaking so loudly that it's got my attention, but choosing the thoughts that feel best to me, choosing the thoughts that take me as a creative consciousness into a place that I have not been before, and then feeling the heavens is not the right word, feeling the non-physicals revel in the new discovery that I've made. Oh, when you begin thinking on purpose, and even more important, when you begin focusing because you care about how you feel, now that triad of intention has come into full place because you're so free that only you can think thoughts that have anything to do with you. And the expansion has already taken place because your vortex has enough growth in it to keep you happily busy for 20 or 30 lifetimes. But when you find that joyful way of focusing that brings it all together so that you are in the receiving mode, so that there's an open channel between what you've created and what's gestated and what law of attraction has got ripe and ready for you, and you begin then receiving the clues, the inspiration, the words, the ideas, the next stepness, the next stepness, you will begin to feel the invincibility of who you are. You'll begin to feel the leverage of the energy that creates worlds. You'll begin to feel the worthiness of your being. You'll begin to feel the knowledge that your inner being holds about you. The new knowledge that you helped provide your inner being because that source energy is not growing apart from what you are. That source energy is growing because of what you are because we are all in this together. But it's only the human. We love you so much who does all your part, who does step one, and we do step two, and then you deprive yourself of the turning the thoughts to things, and then you say, what's it all about? 
I don't get it. What's it all about? What is the end game? And we say the end game is the never ending accepting of you and us all together and the benefit that you provide for us and the benefit that we provide for you and the combining of that joyous experience as we move forward. That's what it's all about.